Hi everyone, it is Realtor Mike Thomas and today we're going to be talking about uh, selling your home without a real estate agent. I know I'm a real estate agent, but um, I live in Palm Beach County and chances are you may not be in Palm Beach County. So I'm going to teach you all those things that other real estate agents will never ever tell you on how to sell your home on your own and save the commission. So let's get started. There's some great information. There's lots of secrets that other people will not tell you throughout this video. So please watch it to the end. Uh, you are not going to uh, regret it. It's going to be a wonderful video for you. And uh, so let's get started now. So on your screen there, you see a 3D floor plan uh, versus a 2D floor plan. A 3D floor plan is so much more exciting. And when buyers see it, they are intrigued by it. They can actually do virtual walkthroughs uh, of your home. And I highly recommend uh, using one. Uh, you can get a 3D floor plan uh, with a professional Matterport photographer using uh, that technology. It works very, very well. So that's what we have on our screen right now. Let me also talk to you quickly about pricing your home. Now, a lot of sellers come to me and said, well, let's price it high to begin with, and we can always come down on our price later. Um, the answer is yes and no. Um, what pricing the home correctly uh, will do for you is the most amount of activity you're going to get is in the first probably week or so once it hits the market. Now, if you price it high, uh, about 85 to almost 90% of the people will have seen your home at the higher price. And they will not remember you lowering the price later on. So their first impression is, is wow, uh, it's at a high price. So if you really want to move, and the average days on the market right now is anywhere from about uh, three to three and a half, almost four months now, uh, if you have the home price right. If it's 10% higher, then you can add another couple of months. If it's 20% higher, you can probably add another six months to, um, um, to waiting. So it depends on how quickly do you want to move, um, which is super important. Now, professional photography is one of the most important things about selling your home. You're going to need a professional. And not just to take pictures or use a professional camera. I'm talking about the professional editing that they do to it to make those pictures look like they're from a magazine. You need your photos to stand out better than any other listing out there. Uh, your competition. So if you go on Zillow, uh, you may see the competition. Um, if you go to Zillow right here, uh, you can put in your listing right there for sale by owner, or you can click on home values to see what kind of uh, home your, your, what the value is of your home, what they call the Zillow Zestimate. Um, it's a great tool. It will tell you what the average home is in the United States. Uh, what the values are, the average price of a home in the United States. Um, you can also um, get a Zillow Zestimate, but be careful of this because what happens is Zillow sells your information to other real estate agents who buy a particular zip code. So if you were a real estate agent and you bought a zip code, um, which is quite expensive with Zillow, they would send you all the leads that would come in. In fact, they do it to about four or five other agents. And the first agent that they, they were doing a round robin at one time, but it, it gets very complicated. Nevertheless, they're going to sell your information to other real estate agents or mortgage people or whoever they think uh, they can make money from because Zillow is a multi-billion dollar company. Um, and that's how they make their money is by taking uh, our 
listings that we put in there, your listing, my listing, everybody's listing, and selling it back to real estate agents. That's what Zillow does. So um, be careful of that when you're on Zillow and you're giving too much information there. Uh, if you tell them you're a seller and that you're interested in selling, that's what they're going to do. So uh, getting back to the photography part, this is a before and after photo. And it's fairly inexpensive. It's about $1.60 per photo to get your photo professionally enhanced. Now, you notice that the grass is greener, the sky is blue, not so gray. The house actually has what they call white balancing in it. And it looks very professional. And uh, they also make this wonderful dusk or what they call nighttime photo. Now, it is the same identical photo, but notice again, the grass is greener, the windows are lit up, the sky is um, like the, the sun is settling in the background. Uh, they really, really do a phenomenal job at that. It's a little bit more money, it's $4 a photo, but not the end of the world when you do the enhancement. The better photo you can take in the beginning is going to give you a better photo result in the end. So first of all, I'd have a professional photographer take my photos and then edit those photos using um, my favorite editing people, Box Brownie, uh, to do that. And with the professional photos, adding in the floor plan, so now you have the, the photos and the 3D floor plan, uh, because what you're going to do with that is you're going to uh, build a quality brochure. And you're not going to put a price on your brochure because having a price on your brochure is not very professional. Uh, here is a postcard that I've done. Oops, back to that. Let me just show you the brochure first. This is the professional brochure that I've created using the nighttime dusk photo. I actually made this a little lighter. Uh, it was a, actually a darker photo, but I didn't like it as well. So I actually, you know, brightened it up some. And I've got some photographs in there. This is actually a four page brochure where the grass is super green. Um, the high quality photos, professional photos are much, much better. They also um, take the, uh, on the TV, they add a photograph in there. Sometimes it's mountain landscape. Of course, I live in Palm Beach, Florida, so they put a nice little beach uh, landscape in there for me on the television set. Uh, and they Photoshop everything in. And it's really, really good. Remember, when you're having a professional photographer take your photos, make sure that all the lights are on in the house and that the home is just lit, lit up like a Christmas tree. That's really what you want. That's what people want to see is a light and bright house. So when you do this, you can have it printed by a local public, uh, a local printer. Maybe you have some kind of Sir Speedy or One Minute print or some kind of print shop. You can actually Google print shops near me and you can actually have them print out some brochures for you because you're going to be needing those for the open house and you're going to want a good high quality brochure um, put together and you can use um, software like Microsoft Word or Publisher if, you, if you're experienced in that. Now, staging a home is also super important when, before you even take your pictures, you want to be able to stage your home. Uh, a home with furniture looks a lot better than an empty house just looking at four walls. It's very, very hard to sell a house where you're just looking at walls and there's no furniture in there. And the furniture has to be staged uh, accordingly. You have to declutter your home. You have to maybe invest in some storage uh, bins, maybe put some stuff in the garage. Uh, you could do home staging yourself, but I highly recommend using a staging company. Um, they're well worth the money. 
Uh, if you have to do some renovations, if you really want top dollar for your home, sometimes you may need to do some renovations or some upgrading to your home uh, to get the most amount of money for your home. Uh, let me go back here. Uh, this is my postcard that I had done and created. You can get these uh, from Vistaprint or Gotprint. Um, you can Google a print shop. Maybe you can get a better deal. Um, this one I had made. You just send them your information, what you want on the postcard, front and back. And they do this really, really nice professional uh, postcard for you because you're going to be doing a mailing. You're going to mail out to uh, the neighborhood. Maybe not your particular neighborhood because sometimes it's hard to sell a house to somebody who already lives in your neighborhood. Now, why would I want to sell my house in my neighborhood and buy another house in the same exact neighborhood? Does that happen? It does, but they have to have some kind of motivation. Either they're buying a bigger home or a smaller home, um, and they really like to stay in the neighborhood. Now, this is the back of the business card. Of course, I sell real estate, so this is some of... Um, the, the advertising that I do here locally. Uh, they really do a good job. I think I had this one done by uh, some printing company called Madam Butterfly or something like that um, here in Florida. But you're going to actually use any print shop. They do fantastic jobs. They do the layout for you. You just send them the photographs and whatever you want the card to read. Um, and you can actually take these down to the post office of course, I've got my stamp on there, uh, prepaid stamp, um, which makes it a lot easier for me. But I would send out probably a thousand of these cards. I always do a minimum of a thousand. Sometimes I go up to three thousand uh, cards. So you want to make sure you're gonna get more than just a thousand cards because you may have to do a second mailing uh, to maybe an adjacent neighborhood, maybe a neighborhood that's next door that has some smaller homes that you're thinking maybe these people would like to have eventually will buy a bigger home, sell their smaller home, buy a bigger home in this neighborhood. Or uh, there may be an adjacent neighborhood nearby where they have bigger homes. And you may think, well, you know, once the kids go to school, uh, go to college, they may end up downsizing to a smaller home and they'll still stay in the area um, maybe in a smaller home in this area so or this neighborhood. So you kind of have to strategize about who your buyer or who your target market will be. You know, who's the buyer for your home? Where are they coming from? Why would they choose your home over another home? And send out lots and lots of mailings. So let me just go here and punch in. This is my website that I have that um, I have some of my listings on. I've got a $2.2 million house right now that's on the ocean. That's absolutely beautiful and gorgeous. Let's take a look at that one. Um, so this is my professional website, but you're going to need a website um, for your home. It may not be this elaborate. You may not need this much information, but you're going to need a website because what you're going to do is you're going to take these professional photos that you've taken, uh, include, which hopefully includes some aerial photography of your home, maybe even a, a cool little video. And you're going to take the 3d floor plan and, um, you know, the information you you put together for your brochure and you're going to put all that on your website and you're going to try to direct people to your website that's going to be your goal i've got this little instant messenger here which is kind of nice um, that people can actually chat with me it pops up on my phone and i can actually chat people even though i'm out and about which is a very very unique feature but again this is a professional website I recommend if you want a website that's a free website, Wix, W-I-X, is a great uh, um, company that may give you a free website. Uh, you can always upgrade to the more expensive website, which they take away some of the ads. 
Um, the companies I'm giving you, I don't get any money for. I'm not promoting the company uh, or anything like that. It's just some ideas I'm throwing out at you. And um, you may find some better companies that work better for you. But you're going to need a good printing company. You're going to need uh, a company that will put your brochure together, 3D floor plans, professional photography. Uh, you're going to need to do that info. You're, you're going to need to put all of that together and have it ready to sell your home and save that commission. So one of the one of the first mailings that I do is um, to the neighborhood is I may have a buyer for for your home. Please contact me because sometimes I have buyers looking in a particular neighborhood and a home is not for sale yet in that area or neighborhood. So that's normally the first mailing I do. Um, I also do other things as well. Um, but let me just focus on the website. You have to have it, the website put together. Um, and of course, I've built several different websites, a well, web wealth builder website, and I'm still working on the Thomas team, some things that I have not published yet. Uh, these are free websites. They do have some advertising attached to it, but if you can live with that, you know, um, then you're going to save yourself some money on a budget as well. Uh, some of the other things that you have to put on your website, a phone number, an email, um, you have to have people contact you. They have to have your information to contact you. And sometimes people don't want to give that out because you may get a lot of real estate agents calling you wanting to list your home. And that's one of the drawbacks about trying to sell your home on your own. But this is something really neat that I like. It's called a uh, zip your flyer. This actually allows you to send to other real estate agents. Now, the question I ask is, are you willing to pay a buyer's agent a normal commission to bring in a buyer, which is normally half the commission that it normally costs you to sell your home. And you can offer that to a buyer's agent uh, or uh, X amount dollars or X amount of percent. You can offer that out to agents and you can use this service. Uh, zip your flyer, of course, I'm not getting paid for this either. It's just something that I use here in Florida, but I believe that they do work throughout the entire nation. Uh, it shows what, how many agents you're contacting and how much it would cost you to send one time to those agents. So this will help you contact agents and say, hey, my home is for sale, I'm selling it myself, I'm willing to pay you a commission, uh, this is how much. Um, and you can choose as many areas that you like. Um, Sometimes you get a good response, sometimes you don't. But be careful with this because it may go to junk mail for some people. They may have a good spam filter. And if this company is not uh, or if their spam filters are set too high, uh, it may go directly into spam for a lot of these people. So you have to look at if you're looking for somebody, you have to see how much goes into spam, how much people actually open the mail. And this company uh, gives you an actual report afterwards, how many people actually opened the email, how many people responded to it. Uh, and that kind of uh, information is quite useful, the statistics. So this is a tool that you may want to use or find some other tool that might suit you better, maybe a better price, I don't know, because of course I live in Florida and I deal a lot with Florida real estate here. So I don't know about California or Texas or any other state, but I do know that these services are available in different states. So whatever state you live in, uh, you can always use this service or find them online by you know, doing a, a internet search of what you're looking for. Emailing flyers to real estate agents or 
uh, you may search on, you know, and these companies already have real estate agents that have opted in to their service. And so um, I guess they abide by all the, the rules and regulations that govern um, email distributions. So th it may be a service that takes the monkey off of your back because those people have signed up with that service and you're just riding along with their opt-in real estate agents that have opted in to receive these emails. And they really shouldn't go to spam if they opted in, but who knows what people have their spam filters set for. Uh, some are set for low, others are set for medium, uh, and some people have set them to high. Uh, this way, they don't get a lot of emails and they might miss out on some opportunities. You know, if you set your spam filter too high, uh, occasionally I'll get an email that I did not sign up for, but uh, I'm glad I got the email because it was very helpful or something to me or my business. So those are some of the things you might look at. Email campaigns are very important. Um, mailings are very important. I recommend you do um, anywhere from about two to six uh, mailings, postcard mailings, uh, email campaigns such as this one, email blasting the neighborhood. If you have like um, maybe a directory or a little booklet with um, some people put out a, some communities put out a, a booklet of everyone in the community. It's kind of like a phone book that may have their emails or phone numbers in there and Sometimes they have, I, and I don't know if they do this in your area or your neighborhood, but here they do do that sometimes and they'll put in um, some ads. You can actually run in those booklets. That's how they, they pay for those. Uh, so you, I normally get the back cover of it, um, which you know, can be quite costly for a neighborhood book, but well worth it again. So you have to do consistent email dro drop campaigns. Um, the first time you do it may not work. The second time you may do it may not work. It may have to be done several times uh, for it to work. But you only need one buyer. But that one buyer is sometimes hard to find for your particular home. Um, when If you're not a professional and you're not out there networking with other real estate agents... Um, I go to networking groups with real estate agents and we just network to share listings, share information and get everything done. The other thing that I would look for is a yard sign. Make sure you get a unique yard sign, not something you pick up at Home Depot, not something that's just, um, you know, generic looking uh, to put in your home, home for sale. Um, it really has to pop and you have to put out a lot of those, not just in front of your house. I'd get at least 10, a minimum of 10, um, for sale signs and open house signs to put around the neighborhood. And you're basically after direct traffic to your home at every corner, at every stop has to be an arrow pointing towards your home, because if you miss an area or a stop, they may not find your home. They may just drive, you know, right past, right past it and may not even see it at all. So make sure you have enough open house yard signs and, uh, you know, to put those at the community entrance during rush hours. Uh, that will help. Uh, hold your open house when other people are holding their open houses. This is very important because I call that piggybacking. So you have a real estate agent holding an open house in the neighborhood and you hold an open house in the neighborhood at the same identical time. This is beneficial to you because that agent will probably have done some advertising to draw some traffic here to your neighborhood and those people that are out and about just may see your home as well. Now, no real estate agents are going to get upset because I gave away that secret, but uh, it will help you sell your home. Uh, you have to hold open houses until your home sells. That's very, very important. 
holding open houses. You can actually post that on, on Zillow uh, to see, you know, how much your home is worth. You can also post open house options on Zillow so people will know. Now, do not be surprised if you get a lot of real estate agents coming through your open house trying to get you to list your home with them. That's going to happen quite a bit, and it may frustrate you. But if you're trying to sell your home, uh, those, may, those agents may be your best friends um, for the time being anyway. Uh, really, really important um, Lead generation. Now, when you get leads, people coming through your open house, what you really need to do is have out a sign-in sheet, like a registry, you know, a sign-in book. I would keep that out and have people sign in because you want to know who's coming through your open house. I'd make sure you get a phone number and maybe an email address and follow up with them with maybe a thank you note or maybe give them a phone call to see what they thought about your home. They're never going to ever tell you anything bad about your home uh, because they're not going to tell you the truth. They're not going to say, oh yeah, your house is a total mess. It really needs to be cleaned up. You need to paint it. Uh, it's just an ugly house. No one will ever tell you that. They're going to be super nice to you and tell you that your home is beautiful. They can't tell you the truth because they don't want you to feel bad. So if you want an honest opinion, um, a real estate agent who's trying to sell your home and is investing a lot of their time, energy, effort, and money into selling your home may be more truthful than um, some stranger who's seen your home who doesn't want to insult you. So another thing that I do that I really like doing is you have to know your neighborhood. You have to know how much your home is worth compared to other homes, your price per square foot to other homes, what your home offers that the other homes don't have. Maybe you have a lake in your backyard or you've got some kind of waterfront. Maybe you have some upgrades or a brand new kitchen or brand new bathroom. Um, and you have to kind of compare that to other homes that are selling in your neighborhood. So this is a, Zillow will actually give you a great idea about who's selling and how much they're asking and what their home looks like. Now, if they've had professional photos done, that home may look a lot better on photo than it is um, in real life when you go to see it. So just be careful with that. When you're looking at homes, I mean, what I do is I look at homes all the time. I'll walk into homes just to see what they look like so I can get a good idea about uh, what my competition is for the homes that I'm selling. And maybe I even have a buyer for that. Maybe I'll look at that house and go, wow, you know, I think that house is a really nice house and it may work well for one of the buyers that I'm working with now. So I always, um, you know, you always have to be knowledgeable about the sales the prices, how long it takes to sell uh, in your own neighborhood. If you're smart about that, then that's that will make you look like a professional. So let's get going and let me see what else I have on my list. I'm sorry, I've got a cheat sheet in front of me of everything that I want to give to you to make sure you get all the information in this video. So I like calling people. And I normally create a database of people. You know, I have to cross-reference that with the do not call list and, you know, uh, abide by all the F, um, Federal Trade Commission uh, guidelines, the FTC, Federal Communication Guidelines. Um, so I call people and I, and I ask them, hey, I just put your neighbor's home on the market, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, and they're trying to sell their home for, you know, this much money. Uh, it's, you know, this many bedrooms and that many bathrooms. Do you know of anybody who's thinking of maybe moving into the neighborhood, a friend, of a family member, or a relative, someone you might know from work? So that really, really works well for me. I like doing it. 
Um, I've done it for years and I'm very good at doing it. And I normally keep a database of communities and people that I have, um, you know, been working with over the years. So that is something that I like to do. I also like to um, tell you that if you are priced too high, you have to upgrade your condition of your home. Now, if you don't want to upgrade the condition of your home, you may have to lower your price. But one of the things you can't do is you can't have your cake and eat it too. Uh, because your competition out there will kill you. And you are you won't sell and you'll get frustrated. And, you know, it's going to be a lot of traffic and lookers through your home. But no actual buyers pulling the trigger because your competition is just a better deal than, than your home is if you don't do these price adjustments. And they should be done very quickly. I normally know what homes sell for right out the gate. And I like to get them priced right to begin with because about 85 to almost 90% of your activity is going to be in the first week. And I don't recommend you blow that grand opening. I call it the grand opening when you first put a home on the market for sale. The first five days are absolutely crucial. And if the home is priced too high, then um, it's going to be a long ride to get that home sold. So I don't want that happening to you. Let me see. What else do I do? Uh, door knocking. And, and I have door hangers. So I like to go through the neighborhood, knock on the doors, talk to people and find out if um, they may know anybody in the area uh, that is thinking of moving. And if so, maybe they'll be a good fit for the home that I just put on the market for sale. And uh, that's something that I like doing myself. It's very productive for me, but it does take an awful lot of time knocking on doors. Florida is very hot and humid, so it's uh, got to have a lot of bottled water. So... I market the, you can also market your listing to neighbors that might be buying up or down in the neighborhood. We covered that. Uh, go to neighborhood events at the clubhouse, maybe run an ad in uh, a community newsletter. Go to all the events that are happening around. Do your direct postcard mailings. You could do social media, but I've never really gotten anything from social media because it just is not doesn't work. So there you have it. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment below.